In this week's vlog, I find myself in a place called Nahirath. 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 Something like that anyway. But uh, if you've no idea what I'm talking about, that's the Gaelic name for Harris. So at the moment, I'm on the island of Harris and Lewis. North being Lewis, south being Harris. And I'm currently in Harris. The easy part here when it comes to landscape photography is you either see a background that you want to capture and then all you do is, is peruse around and round and round looking for something of interest in the foreground just to complete the image. Not that it's important to have both of course. Or you find something fantastic in the foreground and in which case if that's brilliant you're then looking to place the foreground against something interesting in the background. Now without stating the obvious we've got the house here so let's just eliminate that first of all. I'm going to photograph that house wherever I am. We've got the whole vista so I can shoot from really wide and capture the landscape in all its glory or of course now I can look for the more finer and detailed um, parts of the landscape. In other words across here there's a very very small screen that's running so in terms of a, pa a portrait mode I can get my camera nice and low down and give that kind of a grander scale than just a small stream. Moving down the stream of course now what I've got is um, it's like obviously not a lake it's just a big pond just an area where water's gathered so I can go there get low down and look for a lovely reflection because there's no wind at the moment which is absolutely glorious. So really that's my thought process if you think about it logically that way it's a very very easy process i have something in the background that is of interest to me so now all i'm going to do is wander around the landscape and look for something in the foreground of interest to complete the image not sure if you've ever been to harris and lewis the isle of harris the isle of lewis which is all the same island by the way but we just have different names based on whether you're north or south but if you look at the map it's ever so strange because I've never known a place like it. When I introduced myself as being here, I said I was in Nahirat. I think that's how it's pronounced, Nahirat. And the reason why I said I'm in Nahirat, apologies to anybody that lives here, by the way, just in case anybody happens to see this and I'm pronouncing it all wrong, but I am trying my best, trust me. Um, it's called Nahirat to the locals. But for the English, it's called Harris. Why would you give a place name, an English name and a Scottish name? I'm from Wales and I'm from a place called Cumbran. Now it's called Cumbran, no matter where you come from in the world, it's called Cumbran because the town is called Cumbran. It doesn't matter how you pronounce it, it's not relevant. The fact is it's called Cumbran. We don't have London, but London is called St. David for anybody that doesn't live in England. Isn't that really bizarre? <laughs> <laughs> bit of a side note I started vlogging about 18 months ago and the idea was I want to get myself out of the studio lots of exercise get myself in better shape than I'm in now I caught a view of myself in the mirror this morning not a pretty sight at all so I thought to myself while I was speaking to Gary who I'm here with today or who I'm here with on the island I was speaking to Gary over a full English breakfast this morning and I was simply saying I don't quite understand how I'm out and about all the time now. I've never been so active in all my life. And yet I'm putting on weight. Two sausages later and a fried egg later and numerous cups of coffee later and toast and marmalade later. <laughs> this, is at, this is at half past six this morning. We then gathered up all our stuff, including meals for the day. Meals as in plural, plus more sweets than you could shake a stick at crisps buns and everything hmm i just can't just can't for the life of me think of how i'm putting weight on now this is really nice i've moved uh slightly further around so i'm at the pond side now but this is a giant pond looking straight across at the building so we've got a lovely reflection and i'm going to use this rock here as foreground interest but now i'm going to fine tune it so let me just explain to you why I'm going to fine tune this now and why fine tuning can really help 
the composition and, and instead of it being an average picture making it really really quite smart and the only way you can do it is to be boring I tell everybody be boring 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 so what does being boring mean well being boring means stick with rules of thirds get the main part of the interest it's not it's not 100% you don't have to do this okay this is this is just to make sure that your image will always have balance but of course you don't have to put the main subject to the left or to the right in terms of third you can put it in the middle but if you're not sure just be boring get the composition boringly correct and then fine-tune it and then experiment and try something different trust me it just works okay so to fine-tune this shot what I actually mean by fine-tuning this shot now then is that this here is exactly where the camera is that's where I've dumped the camera because I like this foreground interest here obviously leading into the background there with that beautiful reflection which is absolutely stunning but if you look at that composition now in terms of rules of thirds okay this is quite nice here and that's quite nice there but there's not much separation between them there's very little separation between them so just thinking outside the box and tweaking that image slightly just move yourself if it's possible around the lake yikes without falling over to around about there and now boringly that image is much better balanced the foreground interest here is really low down on that third and that is really high up on that third there so that's much greater separation and that in my opinion is much better than being there so what I'm saying is be boring it just it just works be boring if you're not sure be boring all too often when I'm critiquing other people's work it's just simple things like that that would just turn probably a very nice image into an epic image um, I can't see any more than that really once you've been boring and once you've nailed that shot then start to experiment unless you really know what you're doing unless you really are experienced but trust me I like to think that I know what I'm doing I like to think that I'm fairly experienced I still do the same thing say exactly the same thing looked at the composition from here looked fantastic threw my tripod down there then look through the viewfinder and then fine tune there's no way i can walk away from here without looking inside so i'll take you guys with me the orange in that rocks just awesome and also we've just seen an otter uh first otter i've ever seen in my life it's in the wild otter I've ever seen in the wild ever and he's coming over to check us out awesome Is an otter or a seal? I was getting all Morton Hilmer on your asses then. But it's a damn seal. <laughs> I, was, I was so excited. I just turned into Morton Hilmer then. <laughs> damn. Before I venture off inside, this is my last composition. Um, because we're on a whirlwind tour. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it already, but we should have been here for four and a half days. But I ferry was cancelled for two days so quite literally it was borderline whether it was worth coming or not I think if the ferry had been cancelled last night we'd have called it off so literally what we've got or what we had planned for four and a half days we've now got two and a half days in which to cram everything in so it's a whirlwind but uh, the first location quite literally you could just spend all day all day I bet I've taken a dozen compositions and I'm probably just scraping the surface of this place. It's just amazing. For my last composition, I'm going against everything I said earlier on. I think this really, really works as a portrait. And what I've got is the yellow seaweed with the orange rocks. Oh, it's just awesome. There's a water stream flowing down, offering a nice little S bend, which is really interesting as foreground interest, taking us up to the dilapidated building. And more importantly, to fine tune it, I've got my camera down nice and low to lift the roof of that building especially the chimneys into the sky what i'm going to do is at the end of this video i'm going to put down all the different 
compositions that I've taken every one of them okay the ones up close the black and white ones uh, the long exposure shots the quick exposure shots if you understand what I mean the portrait the landscape and just give me a feel for what you guys think uh, and let me know what your preference is what your um, your favorite is if indeed you have one if you don't have one let me know that as well let me know that in the comments box I can't even begin to think of what life must have been like living here. Um, it's a fairly newish building. It's not a two or three hundred year old building, I wouldn't have thought. I'm just guessing this, by the way. I'm just simply looking at things like uh, uh, the windows, the sash windows. Oh no, they're not. They're the old metal framed ones. It's obviously had electricity to it at some point. I'm guessing somebody still owns this. Oh, oh. It's that it's that boyhood thing now that is just compelling me to go inside and have a look around. If we see a dead body in here, by the way, we're all seeing it together at the same time. Oh. Plenty of sheep drop-ins. Look at that. That is going to make a nice picture on its own. How awesome is that? Oh, <laughs> that's an old washing machine. <laughs> so that indicates to me that there's about two foot worth of sheep poo in there so I'm guessing sheep have been coming in here in the winter and using this to get out of that nasty weather oh oh scary wow Um, there is an attic 
and the attic does look as if it's been converted because I can see an old bed up there. Let's see if we can get up there, but look at this. That's an old cupboard. <gasps> I bet this was left in pristine condition as well when somebody left here. I bet it was left in pristine condition. That's probably kids that's destroyed this since and not the weather, not the ailments. Again, sash windows. So that gives you an idea of the date of this building. Um, there's no cavity wall insulation, but uh, someone's been clever enough to think of a two inch, three inch gap with some of that wood cladding walking across here into the kitchen. Oh, look at that! It's an old agar. Wow! That is just awesome. And again, an original sink, and that's not the elements that's done that, that's just simply kids that's done that. And through into this room here, and stairs. What do you reckon? This is a real Halloween experience. Happy Halloween, everybody. Shall we? No. <laughs> this is looking a bit dodgy. Especially a man in my condition. Let's have a look. <laughs> wow! And I don't think for one minute many people have been up here, but there's a bath, a sink, a toilet. This has got more bathrooms than my house. <laughs> Seriously, this has got more bathrooms than my house. There you go, there's the grand tour of this house and that old single bed. Isn't that just awesome? What a great picture that would probably make. How was that for a view from your bathroom window? Terry and I just laughing because of what I said earlier on. The fact that this house, as much as as much as old and dilapidated, really does have more bathrooms than my house. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> Probably in better condition. No, no, I'm just joking. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, <coughs> loving this shot here. Taking a shot, looking out or onto the bay. And um, I'm doing a, um, a two exposures in one here. Going to focus stack. So I'm going to get a nice close shot of this frame. And then I'm going to focus stack it with a focus for outside and combine them both. But uh, wow, I'm really taken back by this. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be the best location I have ever shot and uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now that's, that's really scary and it'll, it'll make your bones go <laughs> if you're a bit squeamish then just fast forward 30 seconds but let me explain <laughs> the staircase here is probably fit enough to hold about two stone in weight so I'm gingerly walking up and down these stairs pretending that I'm no more than two stone in weight now when you <laughs> when you start climbing down the stairs clearly I'm on the edges of the stairs where I'm hoping there's most support I've got my hands on the rails I'm looking up I'm climbing down and all of a sudden I put my left foot on something which I thought was the edge of the staircase and it started going I want to look down it made my bones shiver are you ready I'm going to show you what I stood on and what was me what was making the cracking noise oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
this place just gets better and better. So not only has this place got more bathrooms than me, but that dead ram has got better teeth than me. <laughs> Seriously, you think I'm joking? It's got bad teeth than me. And then you come out from the mayhem to the tranquility of this place. Look at that. Outstanding.